Feminine lifestyle strategist, Miss April Mason. She's been the topic of a lot of discussions lately, ever since she came out over a month ago, saying that she was gonna shut down her business, her How to Date Academy for Women. That's because her black female clients, their expectations were too high. They all wanted to date ballers, but they were not qualified. Also, they had bad attitudes, cursing out her customer service. I did cover that before, so if you wanna see it, make sure you check out the links below in the description. But April Mason, she started more controversy after she made a post telling women to fix plates for their men on Thanksgiving Day. Of course, this should not be an argument, but when you're dealing with a bunch of rebels, which is April Mason's audience, they go around complaining and making a big deal about fixing a man a plate because all of them who go around complaining, they are not feminine anyway, but they usually subscribe to her content so she can teach them how to act like they are. Shout out to the lead attorney. He had a great six hour live stream on this. And during that live stream, April Mason, she showed up. So I'm gonna break down that interaction with the lead attorney in April Mason. It's pretty long, so I will break this up. This is part one. Before we get started, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Click the notification bell for all updates. If you're new, include new subscriber in your comment below and I'm gonna try my best to respond to all of you. Not gonna waste any time here. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey, darling. All right, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Okay, Ava. I saw what was going on. I have my um, I have my YouTube app on and the live stream. I mean, the rich, the, the link. Okay, so we should be good now. Let me run in. Let me run in this area. No problem. No problem. And while you are getting yourself in all this beautiful light, let me kind of pull up uh, what what kind of set this off in the beginning, right? Oh. We. <laughs> this kind of this kind of set it off at the beginning, right? Yeah. When we were looking yeah. at and uh how you were talking about you had been helping women for over 10 years and some of the things that you had encountered but you know we can read this on our own time but i want to maximize the time that we have here with you kind of tell us firsthand about your experience tell you know some of my audience doesn't know who you are so can you give us a big uh, a little background about who you are what you've been doing uh for black women for so long and then kind of the, the things that you've seen as time has gone on, some of the problems that you've encountered. Well, well, one of the things is I have been a date, I, I started out, it's interesting how I got into the dating space. I believe that God gives, gives gifts to who he chooses. And I just happen to be one that can hear the male and the female. And normally when there's a conference, a all male conference, April Mason is normally on the panel of men because I can translate what the men are saying to the women and what the women are trying to say to the men. So I, it was just a gifting that happened. And um, I started seeing how we were shifting. So see, I'm one of those people that believe that. Wait, I don't even know your first name. What's your first name? Just lead. You can call me the lead okay, attorney. Okay, lead. So, Lee, what happened was I started noticing how we as women started to become yeah, the. Sound, your audio sounds great. If you could stay right there. Right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay right here. Um, yeah. I I noticed that as women, I noticed that women started to become the type of men that they were seeking. And what happened was I wait, I wait, never. Wait, wait. Let me just let me just pause that for a second. Cause that's D. You just said it like it was nothing. But hold on, you're saying women started to become the men that they were seeking. That's D, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I was never raised in the strong, independent black woman, you know, household. That was not me. My mother, actually, it was the other way around for me. My mother actually married a man that could not honor her femininity. Mm. So what I did in turn was I went extremely hard because I'm like, man, this fool, you know, he played her. He did not treat her right. And my mother, I thought she was passive, not realizing she was what a feminine woman is. She just married a man that was not equipped to handle what that what came with that type of a woman. Mm. So I used to look at my mom as really um, uh, soft at first, right? Until I got into my own understanding of what was actually, you know, going on. So with that, I started getting into the dating space. My very first YouTube video on uh, dating and femininity was back in 2010 or 11. So when everybody said, you the, you the female this, you the female. No, I'm the only April Mason. I've been in this for a very long time. No comparison needed. Let us all have our own platforms. But what happened was I started to notice that women were more and more successful in business, but they couldn't have, get a quality date to save their lives. Mm. 
Mm. So I started a, a matchmaking service back in 2012, baby. I closed it in 2013 <laughs> because <laughs> the expectations were so unreal. And what was happening was women were thinking, they were looking at themselves and at not, they weren't doing a panoramic view of themselves. Mm -hmm. They, it was all, it's equivalent to when I was married and I got married um, in my twenties and divorced in my thirties. And I didn't realize that I was in a bad marriage until one day or that I was depressed until one day, Lee, I actually walked in Walmart and I walked across the mirror, past the mirror. And I'm only five, three, five, four. That's how I we love them over here. We love the short yeah. women over here. We don't like them yeah. 5'10". <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'm a shorty. Mm -hmm. I'm a shorty over here. Um, I, uh, You know, five, normally my license say 5'4". But I walked past the mirror and I noticed I had got up to a size 16. Now, mm -hmm. all my life I've been a size 6'8", even now. Mm -hmm. But it goes to say that's what I start seeing with women. They weren't realizing what was going on with them. See, I wasn't in tune enough with me to realize, April, you're not wearing jeans anymore. You're wearing jeggings. You know, mm. you're not looking at, you're wearing a, a, a medium small, you know, you used to wear a small medium shirt, but now you're wearing an extra large and a two X. So what we do is we still hold that image of ourselves as we want to see it, but we don't realize we're not as dope as we think we are. Right. And so I had to take a moment and say, wait a minute. And I, I can say this about myself, April, you become what I call a lard ass mm -hmm. is what I have become. And I said, okay, what do I need to do to shift this? I needed to get a divorce because I should have never been married in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed to learn how to love myself more so that I, when it was time for me to remarry again, I could choose a better partner. So that's how I really got really heavy into this work because I actually went through it. Yes. And so, except from the strong part, I was, I didn't come from a bunch of strong, independent women like that. I came from more of the feminine woman, uh, uh, household, although, you know, I had maybe one or two aunts that was a little, err, uh, but overall, my overall upbringing was with more of the feminine energy woman that I looked at as something being weak, not realizing they just chose the wrong men to, uh, have, choose to cover them. The men that they chose could not cover them. And so for me, when I quit, well, me quitting was two years in the making. Wow. And I'll tell you this, over the last two years, although, you know, people say, why would she close if she was, you know, making money? No, it's very lucrative. Put it like this. I'm, I'm going to keep it at 1,000 with you. If you ever want to make a lot of money, join the dating industry and give women fluff. Mm. You see they Derek Jackson. Me. We all know yeah. Derek Jackson making bank. <laughs> I mean, it's not because you got to remember these women, a lot of these women, not all. Of course, when I say these women, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking from an experience of over 10 years of this. Wow. So I've dealt with them from all different ranges, you know. So it's safe to say for me to say that when women came to me, they didn't come to me to become better. They come came to me for a better um, for access to a better people. I do agree with April on that one. You have a lot of women trying to get advice on how to get a man and all this other stuff. They're really not concerned about how to become a better woman to attract that man. All they really want is just access to a better man. This is why they go to April Mason. This is why they go to Rebecca Lynn Pope. They want them to hurry up and find them the baller. And that's also the reason why they gravitate towards Kevin Samuels as well. Kevin Samuels, he's representing the high value man. So you have women who flock to Kevin Samuels, not because they're good women deserving of a high value man but because they just want access they want him to show them how to get the high value man how can i be a part of your group so you can give me a high value man but almost none of them meet the standards because let's be honest if they were high quality women, they wouldn't be asking anybody how to get a high value man. They would already have him. That basically goes for the women calling Kevin Samuel's show. Most of them are baby mamas. They're selfish. They're feminists. They never cared about men before. They've hit the wall already. They're 35, 40, 45, 50 years old talking about what they deserve. Then they get mad when he tells them they're unqualified. April is also saying that it's borderline disrespectful when people tell her that she's a female Kevin Samuel. That's what she was trying to say because she's been doing this for over 10 years. Now, April, she got a divorce a long time ago, married in her 20s, divorced in her 30s. She's in her 40s now. 
She looks really good now. She managed to lose a lot of weight that she said that she gained while she was married. It's funny how she blamed her being overweight on being unhappy that she was married to a person that she wasn't supposed to be married to anyway. She wasn't overweight because of herself. Her marriage wasn't successful because of her. She instead placed the blame on the man that she was married to. Same pattern that she used for her mother as well. She said that her mother was a soft woman, a feminine woman, but she looked at her mom basically as a pick me. But it's funny now that decades later, she's promoting that she switched and now she's a leader in the femininity sector. And this is where I'm getting those chameleon vibes from. April strategies to me, they come off more so as acting, but she's still a rebel and she's still a boss chick. And none of that is feminine. All of the masculine women running around, all the boss chicks running around, they make those moves because they couldn't attract the man they wanted. That's why she said they started to become the man they wanted. Mm. That's what they came for. So, me, my one of my, my best friend told me, he said, April, you're going to have to disconnect or divorce yourself from their results. But I'm like, nah, man, because this worked. It worked for me. It worked, you know, because I'm all excited. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Girl, if you get yourself right, you do this, become the feminine woman for you first. The man is the byproduct. The man is not the reason why you're here. He is the byproduct. If you do these things, you know, you're not in a hurry to get married. Yeah. And so people would always ask me, how do you do what you do when you're not married? I said, because I, I, I am a walking example of what I teach. See, oh. men, women, people think that the man is the validator. Although I love you guys. I love a, I love a, ugh, I love a man. Just, just the way y'all walk and how y'all smell and, and just all of that, right? Mm -hmm. But you're the byproduct. See, women would think or question me, she don't have a husband because I wasn't supposed to have a husband while I was going through developing who April was. If mm -hmm. I would have remarried during that time, I would have been divorced again. Let me go and back so though, let me jump up because what, you know, that sounds deep. I've never heard anybody say that. When you say men are the byproduct, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Okay, sure. What I mean by men is the byproduct doesn't mean that we don't need you. What it means is when you become a dope woman for yourself first, the type of man that you want will easily come along. Mm. So the man is the byproduct of you becoming a dope woman. Gotcha. You don't become a dope woman for the man. And so that's why a lot of men say, well, when I got with her, you know, after I got her like this, she changed. Yes, because she only was that for to get you. She did not become that. So in my dating academy, I used teach me how to date as the bait. That was the sugar to get them in there. Women that actually did the work in my dating academy will tell you my whole life changed. My money changed, how I, my, you know, I got that promotion on my job. So I just had to use the man as the bait to get them to know themselves better because women aren't doing that for real. Yes, women are going to more conferences. Yes, women are picking up more, you know, books to read, but they're not doing the hard work to transform. It's difficult to go through the emotional pain that come with change. I had to realize I wasn't as dope as I thought I was. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. But that was on the outside. Your end result will always tell you how dope or, do or how dope you're not. Mm -hmm. Let so me ask I you, like uh -huh. because when you, when you said uh, men are the byproduct, mm -hmm. because the, the more dope a woman becomes, maybe the the better her the better her the man that she can she can pull yeah. can, can be like i yes. resonate with that i i think I, I like that but then when when you kept going you were talking about you know women making money more on their job women getting these promotions and that's where a lot of men would be like well you know a, a okay woman let, me, becoming... let me explain that okay i'll explain it to you so okay. this is what i mean a woman a, i teach living a feminine lifestyle living a feminine lifestyle means even when you go to work, your energy is more, you're dominant in the feminine, not necessarily the masculine all day. So although we have several family businesses and I'm the CEO of a couple of them, and then I have a 27 year old daughter and my 25 and 23 year old sons, they run the business with me as well. However, I intentionally only give 10 to 15% of my masculine energy to my business every day. Mm -hmm. That means I'm allowing myself a cap so that I can make sure that I am not throwing myself as in the masculine energy as my dominant. There's nothing wrong with a woman being successful at all. It's how she 
operates in the energy of her success. You know, a lot of women who come to my channel, they say, I don't like successful women or I don't like educated women. And that's not the truth. It's not about a woman being educated or a woman being successful or having money. Just like April Mason just said there, it's not about a woman being successful. It's about how she operates within her energy of her success. It's her attitude. Ladies, the problem that the men have with you whenever you get your degrees or you get a certain job, you start thinking you're better than the man. It's the energy that you choose to have once you get the those accomplishments. It's not the actual accomplishment, it's you. And like I've said before, I have a bunch of degrees and stuff just like you all do. But that has nothing to do with my duty as a woman and what I'm supposed to do for my man. There's absolutely no negotiating. My degrees don't stop me from doing the laundry. My degrees don't stop me from fixing dinner or lunch or breakfast or serving him his plate. I still wash the dishes, clean the kitchen, and everything else that a wife is supposed to do. You know, the stuff that a lot of single, unmarried women complain about. Your degree or your job, it does not excuse you from your duties as a woman. And yes, a man and woman, they are physically attracted to each other first. But ladies, a man, he's looking for respect, number one, out of the gate. He's looking for a woman with humility, not a woman that believes that submitting to him or being cooperative, that that's weak. He wants a woman that's feminine, submissive, cooperative, respectful. He's looking for modesty. He's looking for a woman with self-discipline. Oh yeah, and he's wanting it to be real. He's not looking for a woman that's just acting that way until she's able to get what she wants. No, he's looking for a woman that's like that for real, 24-7, 365. So no, taking an acting class, yeah, you can act that way for a little while, but is that really you? And although April is an actress, I will say April the actress, I know she's not the only one. It's not just April. You have a lot of people talking about relationships and femininity, yet they've never been married or they're single or never had a successful relationship with a man. And for the record, I am not talking about widows. That's a very special case. They did not end their marriage and run down to the courthouse and get a divorce. A widow stayed in their marriage. And the only reason they are not with their wife or their husband is because unfortunately one of them passed away. That is totally different from baby mamas or people who ran and got a divorce. It's not the same. If what you're doing is working, it will be evident in your real life. And although April said it is, it's really not. April's advice is not working for April. Yeah, she's in the room with high earning men, but she doesn't have a ring on her finger from a man of that value. And then Miss Mason, she continued with the feminist talking points. The man is not the reason you're here, or the man is a byproduct. The man is not the validator. When the truth is, the woman was placed on earth for the man. He's not an afterthought or a byproduct. Right. Do you think there so, become? Do you think there's a risk in becoming successful? For example, let's just take a quick look at what you you were saying that you're starting to see a lot more. You know, you were saying, well, you know, however, the majority of, of women uh, that, that, that come to you have uh, unrealistic expectations. You were saying the selfishness, fake everything. Uh, they think they should be chosen because they have a mm -hmm. vagina and for the good looks, the entitlement, you know, just me not knowing the difference between being a woman and a wise woman, uh, uh, not knowing how to be versus do thinking uh, that being a feminine woman is weak or a pick me, placing blame and not taking responsibility or accountability for the choices that they've made in men. And do you think that this is also a byproduct of women becoming more dope? Now they're saying, hey, well, I can now have real uh, expectations that are higher, maybe to the extent that they're unrealistic. Maybe I don't want to take blame for anything because I'm so dope. Do you see this as a risk of being of being well, more dope? It's, it's only a risk when when women use those things as their validator. Mm. See, I teach the complete opposite. See, mm. my success, like everybody was like, oh my God, oh my God, I saw you at the Rick Ross Boss Up Conference. You were like right in the front. How did, you know, you, you pay 25 grand to get it into the room, right? Yeah, I did. I was one of like five women out of maybe 40, 50 men. My resources got me in the room. The feminine woman kept me in the room. Mm. Two different things. Right. So a woman can be successful. And I advocate for women to be successful because a lot of our mothers, although they were more on the submissive side, we don't talk about the abuse they were dealing with at the hands of the men back then. 
mm. right? Because they didn't have any resources to say, you know what, I'm going to leave this abuse. I'm going to leave, whether it's emotional, mental, you know, abuse. I'm not really being loved. I'm just being provided for, but at what cost? So there is a, that balance. It's not this or that, it's this and that. So a lot of times people want us to go back to our, you know, the women back in the 40s and 50s. I don't want us to go back there in all ways because we were not treated equally as far as human beings. I don't think men and women are equal from the same. I think we are both equal human beings, but even God created us to where we are different and our differences is what makes us drawn to one another. And see, black women, this is why black men are tired of dealing with you. Whenever someone's asking you to simply be a feminine woman, you always got these color purple stories coming up. And that's one thing that the baby boomers and the Gen X women, they've done a really good job at brainwashing all the women along with the media to believe that every black man and having a relationship with a black man is gonna get you a color purple, I can Tina situation. And then every time you bring it up, that's supposed to erase the expectation of a woman being cooperative or submissive or just doing what a woman is supposed to do. And for people who may not understand, April said this because she really doesn't believe in women being submissive. She believes in women being kind and nice to men, but not submissive. Instead, she's wanting women to make money and become successful so they could basically be partners. She's not really in favor of men having control because she thinks that men will overstep their boundaries. That's why she brought up the whole color purple thing. I'm here to let you know, game over. And if you keep this manipulation and games up, you're going to continue to find yourself alone. Nobody's got time for all these excuses. Bottom line, you all know what the men want, but you just don't want to do it. And you know what? That's fine. Do whatever you want, but don't get mad when you continue to get passed over. Stay tuned for part two of this video. I want to send a special thank you to Shannon and Felix. Also, shout out to Tyrone W, Axe Truth, Julian, and Dark Power. Thank you all for your support for this channel. Want to see more content like this? You can support the channel as well. Links to PayPal and Cash App are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.